Today we're going to talk about the concept of chemical equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium. Now let's look at the following hypothetical reversible first order elementary reaction in which X converts to Y in a single step. Elementary simply means that we can use the coefficients of X and Y to produce the rate law. So let's begin. At time equals zero, the concentration of our reactants is very high, and the concentration of our products is very low. It's actually zero. <coughs> so, at time zero, before our reaction even occurred, we don't have any of our products yet. The products haven't formed, so our Y is zero. Now, our X, the concentration of X of our reactants, is at its maximum, because none of this guy has converted to Y yet. However, as the reaction begins to proceed, the concentration of X begins to decrease, while the concentration of Y begins to increase, because some of this X is converting or becoming Y. Eventually, a point is reached in which the concentration of the reactants of X and the concentration of the products Y does not change. And this is known as chemical equilibrium. This is the point of greatest entropy. In other words, our entropy of our system is at, is at its highest, at equilibrium. Now, let's look at the rates of the reactions, the four reaction and the reverse reaction at each point. Let's go back here. Now, at this point, what's the rate of our forward reaction of X to Y? Well, our rate is determined by our rate constant as well as the concentration of X. And because our constant K stays the same at the same temperature going this way, that means our rate is strictly dependent on our concentration. And because we said our concentration is at its maximum at the beginning at time equals zero, that means our rate going this way forward of X converting to Y is at its highest. What about the reverse rate of going from Y to X? Well, at the beginning, we said we don't have any of the Y. Our Y, or concentration of our product, is zero. And that means, since this guy is zero for the reverse reaction, that means our rate going backwards is zero. And that makes sense, because if none of the Y has formed yet, that means none of the Y can convert back to X. So let's go to this point, somewhere in between our initial and our final. Well, somewhere here, our rate begins to decrease going this way. In other words, because our concentration of X begins to slowly diminish, this guy begins to get smaller. And so since this guy remains the same throughout the experiment going this way, that means our rate also begins to diminish going from X to Y. How about going from Y to X? Well, going from Y to X, our concentration of our product begins to increase. And that means as the reaction is going this way, we're getting more of Y. That means our Y, our rate law, for going from uh, the products to reactants begins to increase that rate of reaction, rate of reverse reaction. That's because the concentration of Y begins to increase. Eventually, the concentration of this guy and this guy at equilibrium will be exactly constant. They won't be the same, although they could be the same, but they will be constant. The concentration of X will not change and the concentration of Y will also not change. And that means our rate of the reverse reaction this way and the rate of the forward reaction going this way will be the same. Now once again, it's important to understand that the concentration of X and Y at equilibrium will not be the same. They could be the same, but it's not necessary for them to be the same. The reason that their rates are equal is because the K constant going this way and the K constant for the reverse reaction are different values. And so the rates are equal even though the concentrations might not be equal because the Ks balance the rates out. Now once again, it's important to understand that entropy at this point is at its highest because entropy defines the most probable state and equilibrium is the most probable state. 
Now, it's also important to understand that at this point, it's dynamic equilibrium. In other words, the reactions are still occurring. X is still being converted to Y, and Y is still being converted to X. It's just because the two rates are equal, the concentrations remain the same. So even though it seems like the reactions have stopped occurring, X is not going to Y and Y is not going to X, that's not true. Reactions of forward and backward are still occurring. It's just they're occurring at the same rate. And that's exactly why the concentrations are remaining the same. Now suppose, for example, if I added more X. If I added more X, I would change my concentration of X. And that means for a few seconds or for some time, my concentration of X would change and this would shift equilibrium this way causing X to be converted to Y at a faster rate than Y converted to X and that's called Le Chatelier principle and we'll talk about that in another lecture so now let's suppose we have the following elementary reaction in which our reactants X and Y convert to our product Z and W. Now A, B, C, and D are the coefficients that represent the moles of each respective atom. Now let's suppose our reaction is, is a dynamic equilibrium. And what that basically means once again is that the rates at which X and Y are converting to Z and W is the same as the rate at which Z and W is converting to X and Y. Now once again, we're making the assumption that this is an elementary reaction. So that means we can write the rate law for each reaction going this way and going that way by simply using the coefficients A, B, C, and D. So let's do exactly that. So the rate of our forward reaction is equal to the constant for going this way, K1, times the concentration of A to the A power, times the concentration of y to the b power, the coefficients. And this equals to the rate of the reverse reaction, the backwards reaction, z and w converting back to x and y. And this equals k minus 1, which is a different constant than this constant. Remember, the two constants going this way and this way are different. Times the concentration of z to the c coefficient, or exponent, times the uh, concentration of W to the D power. Now this guy is equal to this guy because we're at dynamic equilibrium and the only reason we are able to write the rate laws like this using the coefficients is because this is an elementary reaction. So now let's bring all the constants to one side and everything else, the concentrations, to this side. So we get the following, K1 divided by K minus 1 equals this guy divided by this guy. Now notice that these two guys are constants. They're the same or they don't change at the same temperature. And that means we can represent this guy as another constant, namely K. Now this K is known as the equilibrium constant. And the relationship between our K, the equilibrium constant, and the chemical equation above is known as the law of mass action. So what's the meaning of K? Well, K is simply the ratio of the, <coughs> of the concentration of products and the concentration of reactants at equilibrium, when the dynamic equilibrium has been established. And what K does is it tells us how far the reaction proceeded at equilibrium. In other words, we can have three situations. K can either be greater than 1, and if K is greater than 1, that means at equilibrium we have more products than reactants, and that means our reaction is a product favored. It's spontaneous going this way. Now, if K equals 1, that means at equilibrium our concentration of products is the same as the concentration of reactants. Now, if K is, mu is less than 1, that means this, the denominator, is larger than our numerator. And that means we have more concentration of reactants of these guys at equilibrium than of our products, than these guys. And that means our reaction is not product favored. It's not spontaneous. In fact, it's reactant favored. This reaction is spontaneous, but this reaction isn't if our K is less than 1. And that's the meaning of K. 
Now, a few more important things that I want to mention about equilibrium constants. Now, an equilibrium constant is unitless, and that's because we're dividing concentration by concentration. So our units at the end will cancel out. Now, our equilibrium constant depends strictly on temperature, and that's because our constant is actually a rate constant divided by a rate constant. So it's the ratio of the rate constant going this way to the rate constant going in the reverse direction. And because these guys are dependent only on temperature, this guy is also dependent upon temperature. It does not depend on the concentration. Now note there's a big difference between equilibrium constant and chemical equilibrium. Although the two things are related, they're two different separate ideas. Once again, equilibrium constant is a ratio of products to reactants, and it depends on temperature, while chemical equilibrium refers to a condition, a system. And if we add, for example, more reactants to our system, then our chemical equilibrium is shifted to the right. More reactants will be produced. And that's because of La Chatelier's principle. We'll discuss that in a bit. But remember to have this distinction between equilibrium constant and chemical equilibrium. They're different things. Last thing I want to mention is about this expression, this chemical equilibrium expression. Now notice we included every single reactant and product. And that's because we assumed that X, Y, Z, and W were, equal, were either in the aqueous state or the gas state. Now only aqueous or gas molecules are included or expressed in our final expression. Solid molecules and liquid molecules are not included in our expression and that's because their density stays the same throughout our experiment. And so they really have no effect on our equi uh, equilibrium constant or chemical equilibrium.